If you're looking for a Wi-Fi 7 router that does things a bit differently compared to most others on the market, you might be looking at the Fritzbox 7690. And today, we've reviewed this Wi-Fi router to see if it's any good based on its admin settings and options, Wi-Fi signal and speeds, value for money, and more. But before we begin, click the link in the description to the Fritzbox 7690 on Amazon to learn more about this Wi-Fi 7 router and see what it costs when you're watching this. So as we touched on before, the 7690 is quite unique compared to most other Wi-Fi 7 routers you can buy. The router is made by a company called Fritz, which is based in Germany, and the router itself is manufactured in Europe as well, rather than in China or in another further afield country. As a result, the router has quite good build quality from our testing, and it also comes with a 5-year warranty compared to the 3 years that most other routers do. The other unique thing you might notice about the 7690 is it comes with a DSL port. This is because in Germany, where Fritz is from, and we think in some other European countries as well, DSL is actually quite good. For example, here on the Vodafone Germany website, you can see you can get a DSL internet plan with a download speed of 250 megabits per second. Here in the UK though, you'll probably be connecting to the router with its WAN port, which supports speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits per second, which is really good. There are three other LAN ports as well, including one more 2.5 gigabit port and two 1 gigabit ones as well. There are two phone ports on the back, an extra one on the side, and a USB port to do things like connect external storage to the router. The 7690 supports Wi-Fi 7 as we touched on before, meaning it's sort of like the big brother to the Fritzbox 7530AX, which Zen is currently shipping to their fiber broadband customers. You can see here the routers look quite similar, but the 7690 is a bit bigger. Getting set up with the Fritzbox 7690 is fairly straightforward, but there's a few things you need to know. The first thing you need to do is plug the router into power. In the box, the power plug is separate from the power brick, so you need to attach it, and there's a bit of a technique to this. We found the best way to do this was, insert the plug from the top first, then pull the slider down to release the catch, as you can see here, then lower the bottom of the plug into place. You can then release it with your other hand, and the plug should be affixed firmly in position. Then you can just plug the router in using the cable with the barrel jack on the back of the router. Now since we're an OpenReach customer, we'll be using the WAN port to get online, and we think it's the same with most other fiber broadband networks, like City Fiber for example as well. Plug the included cable into the WAN port on the back of the router, then plug the other end into your ONT box. Since we're using OpenReach, We'll be using our OpenReach ONT at the front of the house. From this point, you'll probably need to configure the router depending on the broadband provider you're using. And the process for doing this can vary a bit from provider to provider. And it might also depend on which firmware the router comes with. The first step is to connect to Wi-Fi, then type fritz.box into your web browser, then log in using the details printed on the sticker on the router. You'll now go through a wizard to set everything up which is fairly straightforward most of the time. If you're using fiber broadband like we are with an ONT box, choose this connect to a fiber optic modem option. Then in our case, we needed to provide our PPPoE details in order to log in. With BT and EE, these are not unique to each individual customer, so we could just type in BT Home Hub at btbroadband.com and leave the password field blank and easily progress throughout the rest of the wizard. There's not much else you need to configure in the wizard to get online. It just updates the router's firmware for you for convenience, though you can change the Wi-Fi settings as well if you want. But speaking of firmware, if you get a 7690 with an older firmware version installed out of the box, you might not see this connect to a fiber optic modem option. Instead, you'll get options for DSL and cable. And in our case at least, this meant we couldn't put in our PPPoE details, so we couldn't complete the wizard and get online. If this happens, you'll need to back out of the wizard and go into the main admin settings, again by typing fritz.box into your web browser. From there, go to internet and then account information, scroll to connected via, choose connection to an external modem or router, then scroll down a bit to account information and put in your username and password here so you can log in to your ISP. Then it's worth doing the firmware update manually, 
because the wizard didn't do it, which you can do under the system option on the left to make sure you're getting the best functionality from the router. One other thing worth mentioning, if you're using this Fritzbox router with one of their Wi-Fi extender products, like the Fritz Repeater 3000AX, which we've reviewed recently on the channel, all you need to do is press the WPS button on the repeater, then on the 7690, and the two devices will begin talking to each other. But for more about setting up this router with an extender, watch our full review of the Fritz Repeater 3000AX on the channel. One of the best things about the Fritzbox 7690 is the software it comes with. Once you log into the admin interface, you'll find an absolutely huge range of different settings you can change, and a lot of different data you have access to as well. A lot of the stuff in here we don't really see with a lot of other manufacturers, and we think the Fritzbox software is really intuitive as well. For example, if you enable this by device, you can see their bandwidth usage in real time and graph it, allowing you to see how your network is being used. This can be really helpful if you don't have really fast internet and you find your speed slowed down at certain times of day. In this case, you can find which devices are using all the bandwidth and fix this issue so you don't slow down so much. You can change Wi-Fi settings, set up a VPN on the router, schedule the Wi-Fi network to turn on and off, and there's a really big range of telephony options as well, like handling voicemail messages, and you can even set the phone to wake you up as an alarm if you wanted to do that, as well as a heap of other settings as well. Essentially, basically anything you'd ever want to do is in here. So the Fritzbox 7690 is particularly good if you like to go in and customize a lot of different settings. We tended to get really good speeds and signal with the Fritzbox 7690. We had it installed by the front door in a four bedroom, two story house, and we tested it on EE's 900 megabit broadband plan, which comes with 110 megabit upload speed. Throughout the house, even at quite long range from the router, we typically got download speeds of at least 500 megabits per second, with no Wi-Fi dead spots, and good upload speeds as well. And if we went outside the house, on the opposite side of the property from the router, going into the back garden, we'd still normally get at least 300 megabits, even with a relatively low signal score according to our app, meaning the router does well delivering fast speeds on a consistent basis, even if you don't have perfect signal, and our upload speeds were really good as well, never really dropping below 50 megabits per second, which is really good over Wi-Fi at long distance. But there is one thing about the 7690's Wi-Fi performance it's worth knowing, and that is, it might be worth changing the Wi-Fi channels it's using out of the box. We found that on the 5 GHz band in particular, it wouldn't use higher channel numbers when they were completely free of interference, so to get the best speeds, we went in there and changed the channel to something higher, channel 64 in our case, allowing us to get the best possible speeds. We think the Fritzbox 7690 offers good value for money given what you get with it. It comes with a longer warranty than a lot of other routers at a similar price point, and some of the best router software on the market in our opinion. Its Wi-Fi also performs really well, even at long distance, and the range of ports it has is quite good, especially the two 2.5 gigabit options. So if you don't mind paying a bit more for a better Wi-Fi 7 router than most others on the market, we think the Fritzbox 7690 is definitely worth looking at. So thanks for watching, and remember, click the link in the description to this router's page on the Fritz website to learn more about it and its specifications, and also click the link to its Amazon listing to see what it costs at the moment. And if you have any questions about this router, feel free to ask us in the comments below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.